officially in the Pacific Northwest now. So last night around 9.30 p.m., according to the navigation chart, we crossed from California into Oregon Territory. And I was looking at that going, well, why is it gonna take us until 11 a.m. to get into Astoria? And now I see why, because we are going through a channel right now. So we're on the port side of the ship and we've had nothing but ocean out to us because starboard side is by land when you're going north um, up the west coast. But now there's land on both sides and we're going very, very slowly because we don't want to make big wakes in this channel. It's going to be a beautiful day. The sun is out. It's chilly. It's like 55 right now. High of 60 today. Oh, the views are pretty. Everyone told us the Oregon coast is absolutely beautiful. They weren't lying. It's nice. Ah, beautiful Astoria, Oregon. I'm really excited about today because we have a private tour guide that's going to take us around and show us all the cool places that they filmed. The Goonies. Yep, The Goonies was filmed here in Astoria, Oregon. I'm super excited about that. Probably more excited about that than I should be, but <laughs> hey. And we're about to go under this really cool bridge. It's a nice, brisk morning, probably 60 degrees. The sun is out. Um, the winds are calm, finally. It has been a very windy trip thus far extremely windy so this is a nice change ah i'm looking forward to today actually we are not going under that bridge because we are at port yeah we've been sitting in our room thinking we were going to go under the bridge so we can't see anything on the other side we're going to go look at it see what's going on out there a little bit of information about Astoria right here. It was founded in 1811, so it's the oldest city in the state of Oregon, and it is the first settlement west of the Rocky Mountains. It's located where the Columbus River meets the Pacific Ocean. One more little interesting piece of information is the name Astoria was named after John Jacob Astor. That's all good and dandy. Really great information, Lisa, but what the people really want to know out there is, this is where the Goonies were filmed. <laughs> this is great. There's like a little market right here when you get off the ship. They call it a maker's market, so it's all like handcrafted items. That's really cool. How oh, genius. Our tour guide, Katie, is wearing a Where's Waldo shirt because we can pick her out of a crowd very easily with that shirt on. Very smart. First thing she said was, I'm gonna take you to all the places where they filmed the Goonies. That I'm really excited about. There's so many other cool things to do too, but that's kind of like the highlight for me, believe it or not. It's gonna be fun. It's warming up a little bit. Might have to shed my little hoodie here. Ooh, I gotta catch up with them. I am Katie and I own Onward Adventures and my partner is somewhere over there. <laughs> and we do tours of Astoria, Oregon. So today you'll be seeing the Astoria Column. That's the first place that we're gonna go. And then we're gonna go through town. We're gonna show you the Flannel House, the Goonies Jail. You'll be able to go inside, take a couple pictures. It's pretty cool. And then we'll go through town. I'll show you the um, kindergarten cop where their um, oh, wow. grade school is. <laughs> and then the house, Pier 39, where you'll be able to see like all the sea lions, the Bumblebee Museum. My favorite coffee shop ever is Coffee Girl is there. Very Scandinavian, very, very good. Uh, we'll go by the Maritime Museum. We'll take some pictures there. Maybe be able to go onto one of the boats, take a look. And we'll check out time, see if we could do more there, if not. We'll walk through town a little bit, show you the North uh, Museum and the pier. And the pier is pretty cool. It's a lot of fun. It's like a full day. It is a full day. You're gonna like it. Awesome. It's pretty cool. I'm super excited showing you. Right over there is the trolley, but it gets super, super crowded. Unfortunately, we only have one trolley. This is gonna be a fun day. So oh, yeah. I'm so glad we found Katie. This is gonna be a really fun tour. She's taking us to all the places we wanna see. And you know, Astoria is not a place that you can go to all these places on foot. You can, you can walk or take the trolley to a few of them, but to really see it, this is the way to go. I'm stoked. It's been a great cruise, the whole thing. I know. Let's roll. Now it's our turn. We have our little planes. We are about to climb the 160 plus steps to the very, very top of the Astoria Column hey, up there. to throw these off. 
little tip. There's planes on the ground too, so we, we had just two. <laughs> we found two more, so now we have four to throw. Yeah. Coming. You got it. We're almost there. Got my leg workout in for the day. Oh, I'm not a big fan of oh, heights. The railing's all the way up to your chest. You'll be fine. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thank God we're short. The views are absolutely incredible over here. And we have airplanes to throw. So I threw one in and it hit the building. Let's see if I can do better this time. <laughs> Ready? It is still flying. It's still flying. It wasn't a good start, but. It's way over there. So yeah, it looked like a bum start because it went, it looked like it dumped off, but it caught the wind. And I mean, that thing is still airborne over there. It's been airborne. It's out there with the birds. For like two and a half minutes already. It's still flying. Most of them go down nice and leisurely and it takes about a minute for them to, to land. And I got one that did a nice little spiral, but that one right there started bad, but ended good. It went way, way over there too. That's awesome. Views are spectacular. So you can really see it up here. This is where the Columbus River comes out and meets the Pacific Ocean. I'm so glad that's over. It got busy up there. We had to get down. Yeah, there's a big tour bus here. So it went <laughs> all these people. But um, whew, my legs are like jello right now. All right, buttocks tight and ready. <laughs> Little Goonies trivia going on right now on the bus ride during the tour. Katie's over here reading off some trivia. I don't know. I knew that the I knew that the film was uh, filmed in 1985. I got that one right. Yeah, we got that one right. So far, that's it. Yeah. Here we are. We are in Story, Oregon. This is the Goonies little museum here. It's like a film museum. And out front of it is the car that the bad guys drove. You can see the the bullet holes right here. And then on the side of it says the Goonies, but this one was in the movie that the, the bad guys drove. How cool is that? Well, Jeep Cherokee. building used to be the county jail and a scene from the Goonies was filmed in here and then after that movie became so popular they ma made it a film museum. So now you can look into the jail cells and they've got Goonie memorabilia here. Jason just took his mug shot. It really was a jail. <laughs> you schmuck. Do you really think I'd be stupid enough to kill me? Kill myself. Burn some rubber. Eat my dust. Eat my dust. <laughs> Alright. Alright, that's enough. Oh, I'm stuck. <laughs> right, I guess we're gonna turn into Dukes of Hazard. So right across from the Oregon Film Museum is the Flobble House, and this museum is where Mikey's dad worked in the Goonies. Okay, right in front of the Flobble House are two of the cool, oh, three, that's a cool tree too. Look at this tree, it's massive. Some kind of fir tree. Oh my God, it's beautiful. It's a Douglas fir maybe? I don't know, you know, leave a comment. There's not a cedar? And then behind this one is a cherry blossom tree that's in bloom over there, that beautiful white one. And then there's that, I don't know what that is, but it's really cool looking. Yeah, so somebody had, he Googled it and he's, they're saying that this is a, an incense cedar tree. This big tree. I didn't even know there was such a tree. Gosh, there's so many types of trees. <laughs> incense cedar. It's cool. We have arrived at the Goonies house. Mikey's Here's house. The Goonies smell boxes. This is a uh, private area. So we've got to be really quick and just go up, take a picture and get back down. <laughs> First you got to do the truffle shuffle. Come on. <laughs> so now we're on Pier 39. This is a pier that you can drive on, but they decided the tour bus was probably a little heavy and we walked out here, which is a very short walk. 
but um you can hear the seals in the dif yeah, distance over here there's a ton of them over there but she said we can get a better shot of them a little bit further over but you can hear them as you're walking up just barking and um, a really good coffee shop over here called the coffee girl she was coffee like shop. you have to get coffee here and then she said uh rogue has good fish and chips and it is lunchtime, so yeah, it's on a pier yeah i bet it's really good fish and chips since it's his screw up okay what is the tree that we saw over at the flavel house according to the website it is a giant sequoia not okay. an incense eater but i'm going to blame that on google lens so that's the tree y'all that's what it was so down here on the pier is a little free museum about the canning that was done right here in Astoria. So it's um, called the Bumblebee uh, Canning Museum. We're gonna go check, or actually it's called Hathorne Cannery Foundation. You've probably seen the can in the grocery store. Yeah, Bumblebee Tuna. Bumblebee and Tuna. I've had it many times and love it. And it's a free museum, so let's go check it out. Okay, so we were watching this little video on how it's prepared or how they can it. And basically the tuna is already cooked before they, it's put in the can. But once it's canned uh, and labeled, they put it in a pressure cooker for 10 more minutes and let it cook inside the can. Then they'll put the labels on and then phew, off for distribution. So interesting. They didn't just can tuna. There's salmon and crab and shrimp and pretty much anything that you can pull out of the waters, they canned right here. This here is a banner of all of the uh, tuna just stacked to the ceiling. So, of course, you can imagine they fished out the salmon, and once the salmon runs dwindled due to the dams and overfishing, tuna they discovered out in the ocean was uh, like a gold mine in abundance. Correct, yeah. So, they brought some fella from San Francisco up to teach them how to pack tuna because tuna and salmon do not pack the same. So some guy came up and tuna saved the whole industry. And then in 1980, this was the last canning bumblebee fishing place on the pier, on the whole Columbia River here. So huh. and, uh, there's one small canner named Fishhawk Industries. They still do some canning down the river, but bumblebee owned it. Now, as Peter would like to say, bumblebee, I've been, because uh, I get asked all the time, well, where's Bumblebee now? Well, like any big corporation, they have a corporate office in San Diego where they push paper and fish around the world. So. This is what they would cook them in right here, these right. pressure yep. cookers. Yeah, that's, that's what. So they were not cooked ahead of no, time. Somebody was saying in there they were, but okay. So I stand corrected. It's not cooked before it goes into the can. They just pick it apart, shred it, like you know the tuna is in the can. Then they put it in the can. Then they put it in those pressure cookers that you just saw and they cook it for like 10 minutes. I've had a lot of canned tuna before. We are in Coffee Girl right now getting some coffee and Elisa is getting her a triple chip cookie bar. Looks really good. So we are at the Columbia River Maritime Museum now. We don't have a lot of time here because our port day is so short. So we are, we were told that the outdoor museum going to see the boats is what we should do on our limited time. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to head back Beauty there and see cruising, the boats. Though, you get a good taste of the little places. You come back and visit. We can come back.
so this is going to be our last stop of the tour and this was an unexpected stop somebody on the bus asked where they could get oysters and fresh fish and so that's why we're here so we're at One joseph's the says, this place yes joseph's and smoked fish we're gonna go in here and see what they got so all around astoria you're gonna find those historical landmark uh markers on the houses and the buildings astoria's got more historic buildings than any other area of the west coast they have some samples of some rainbow trout that was fresh caught today and smoked right here in this little medicine cup God. Mm. that is wonderful salty goodness oh that's fantastic i want <laughs> A lot you more of that. <laughs> I need I need the whole tray. This is going to be our stock guy. Okay, and how is this prepared? So typically, this Chinook is going to be um, smoked hot, they're both hot smoke, and the Chinook comes out a lot more oily and moist compared to the sockeye. Sockeye. This is the Chinook. Chinook. Yes. You said they're hot smoke? Hot smoke. Oh, hot smoke. Hot okay. smoke. I got you. Yes. Okay. So it comes out very moist and oily for Flakes? the Chinook. Is that just oil? Um, no. So this just has that smoke and the salt brine on it. Oh, There's gosh. No so marinade, good. no added anything. Oh man. Yeah. And then that there is going to be our sockeye. Comes out a lot more drier, very crumbly. Would be great on a salad. Yeah. I like them both. Yeah. I like this one better. Yeah, I, like, I, I tend to go with the moist. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. For that. No problem. <laughs> Do you get sick of eating fish? Um, I used to I used to eat the chowder daily, but now I can't. Maybe once <laughs> I a week. Maybe. I understand. Yeah. Oh wow. Yum. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. <laughs> Man, I've had the lobster. I've had Maine lobster in Maine, and I've had clam chowder in Oregon. I've also had it in New England, <laughs> but now I get to try it in Maine. I mean, now I get to try it in Oregon. Sorry, thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> Good. Oh my God, man. That's the best stuff. It's fantastic, by the way. Good, good. Awesome, very good. Oh, I can't tell you how good this is. It just hits the soul immediately. Big old chunks of potato. Mmm, taste that buttery cream, creaminess in there. With some herbs, big old chunks of clam. Now I just gotta figure out how to eat it fast because uh, we gotta get back on this on this bus and get back to the ship. Mm. I had to come all the way to Astoria, Oregon to get this t-shirt, but we came, we saw, got the t-shirt literally. Yep. This is where Goonies was filmed. I probably told y'all that like a hundred times, but I just, that's, my day has been made. I saw Mikey's house. I saw the mailboxes. I saw the, the Jeep, the Jeep Cherokee that the bad guys got shot up in. Went to the little museum, the film museum. I mean, this town is cool, but that was super cool. And I love my new t-shirt. This is awesome. It was a great day. got the traditional crece salad. I've got some mozzarella, tomato, pretty good. The tomato is not quite as ripe as I like, but the mozzarella is really good. I got the spaghetti carbonara, which is one of my favorites. I don't know if this one's, this is 
this has got the pancetta or the bacon, but it's got some pork bits in there. A little bit of a creamy sauce. Mm. And I got a weakness for pasta. <laughs> Me too. Oh. It was good and hot too. Man, you can taste that that smoky pork flavor in there. That's really good. That's just rich and delicious. I think I've cracked me a little bit of pepper on there. With cheese for you? Uh, yeah, a little bit of cheese. Yeah. Ooh, get a little parm. That's good. Thank you. Perfect. Want cheese for you? Oh, I have the beef bolognese lasagna. Yeah. I just can't pass up lasagna. <coughs> And this is not even the entree. This is still like a pre-entree because you see how small the size is. Mm. That's amazing. Oh my God. Just flavor explosion as soon as that goes into your mouth. You can taste, oh, just the, oh, I can't even talk. All right, as good as my spaghetti carbonara was, because as you can see, I killed it. I took a bite of her lasagna, and she's right. It's really good. It's, I mean, it's it's got a nice sweet flavor to it. I, I, I had no words. And the, the marinara is like velvety on your tongue. It just coats your tongue like, with this velvety mm, deliciousness. Good stuff, Maynard. No, she's giving me another bite. Will you eat your lasagna? It's so good, I have it to share. Fine. Mm. That's scrumptious. Y'all, make sure you get the lasagna or the spaghetti carbonara. All right, we haven't even got the main course yet. Yes, I ordered a pizza at the Italian restaurant. I could have gotten a fancy dish. I love pizza, I'm very pure on that. So, when I have the chance to get a freshly made pizza, this is pepperoni, mozzarella cheese, and basil. And it's very good. So I got the filet, medium rare, hopefully, uh, with ravioli. Blue cheese. Blue cheese ravioli. It's pretty yeah. interesting. Let's cut it in this bad boy right here. Pretty good, medium rare, I'd say. All right, let's give it a bite. It's good. Pretty good and tender. And that sauce, it's um, a peppery. It's got a good flavor to it. That's good. It's olive oil. My tenderloin is a little more cooked than I would like it. But the flavor's good. 